So hello everybody and welcome to another Power BI slash Excel video. This video is really, really cool. I wish I had this when I was a business user. I'm going to show you how you can grab data from Power BI into Excel without using pivot tables. This is the coolest thing ever. Let me show you. So guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use data types if you are a business user, and I'm going to show you how to set it up if you are a developer. So this is for both of you. Don't skip anything, okay? So if you are an Excel user, you probably have seen these data type things and wonder what they are. Maybe you've clicked on them and really, really un didn't understand what it is. If you open it up, you will see that there are some data types that have been provided by Microsoft. And if you're lucky, your organization has created ones for you, data types for you. I have created a few, one for categories, products, and population. But this is how this data types thing work. So in this organizational data type product, I have created a data type for the products in the North Wind organization. So what does that mean? Very, very easily. If I type the name of a product here, queso cabrales, and then I click on products here, what it's going to do, Excel is going to go and check in the organizational data types if there is any product called Queso Cabrales. If it finds something, it's going to give us this icon. If you click on the icon, it will show a card. It said, hey, we retrieved data from Power BI, Queso Cabrales, and this is a product ID, blah, blah, blah. And then it says it is a certified data set stored in Northwind data set. So it recognized this as a product at our company. So if I put another product, chai, for example, this is a T, and then I press on product, it will again go to the data set and say, hey, do we have a chai product? Yes, indeed, we do have. How cool is that? Now, let me put another product, chef. It's checking, and as you can see, it gives us a question mark. What it basically means is that there were more than one hit. So if you click on it, it will tell you, hey, there are actually two chefs. Well, which one did you meant? Wait, let's speak Cajun seasoning. Looks good. Gorgeous, huh? So this is really, really cool. I wish that you could click on products. It will give, it, it will give the list of all products. That We don't have to know the products by heart. It's not always that you do. But anyhow, really, really cool. And you might say, okay, so what? what's the deal with that? Well... Once it, Excel has identified that this is a Power BI product or a data type, it allows you to pick information about that thing. So you can say, okay, what is the unit price for a case of Cabrales? If you actually turn this into a table, and you do the same thing, it will give you for everything, otherwise you have to drag it. You can drag, it's absolutely no problem, but if you create it as a table, it will recognize it as a table and it will add everything. So here you have product name. This is really, really, really cool. And then you have access to your dimension tables as it's called in, you know, in the BI world, but it's basically you have access to your product information from a Power BI data set. How cool is this? And then you can grab everything, right click and say, hey, I actually want everything as text. Unfortunately, you lose the information in there. Uh, not so good, but probably you can copy paste the information in there. It's, it's a pity that you cannot just turn everything into text and say, okay, I don't want this to be smart anymore. But whatever, I'm just being big. <laughs> it's actually quite cool. Imagine the possibilities that when you're doing data analysis, you just have product information at your fingertips all the time. So how do you set this up? This is what we're going to do today. So here's what you do. It's actually very, very, very easy. I have here my data set that you can see the product table that you were seeing in Excel. And if we go here to the modeling tab and we pick the product table, you will see here that it says is feature table. Yes. And that's what you are seeing. If I click on edit, you will see that the role label is product name, but the key, the key ID for this is the product ID. So 
if we try to do the same for customers, right? We want to have also a customer table that our business users can access. What you need to do is you grab the table, feature table, yes, row, company name, I would say, key column, you want to have the customer ID. It doesn't let you grab it because it is hidden. So you have to actually unhid it in there. So you can actually hide the columns from, from these um, tables. So now we do it again, feature table, yes. This is company name, this is customer ID, and then this is customer info. Be more descriptive. But, you know, I don't want to bore you with descriptions at the moment. So you press save or publish. Publish will force you to save, so either way it works. And we're going to publish it again to uh, the service. Okay, we got it. And now let's see if it shows up in Excel. We need to have some customer names, though. I don't know the customer names for a company name. Alfred, okay, we'll pick Alfred. Okay, so let's go back to Excel. Here we are in Excel. Let's get a new sheet. We'll go here and look what we found. So wonderful. So if we write Alfred, you don't need to write everything. That is so cool also, customers. I wish that you could write great customers and it will give you the list of customers. But here we have our customer. That the company name is the same, obviously. So again, if we make this already from the get-go as a table, whatever column we add, let's say contact name. How cool is that? I mean, this is so, so useful. It's crazy. Germany. Okay, so now I have actually as a data type population uh, numbers. This comes from Eurostat, so it's country and population. So I was wondering if I could click on here, Germany, and click on population, it would give it to me, but it doesn't. So I have to go Germany, and then I have to grab population, and then it will grab after that the population, okay? But how cool, this is so useful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful for data analysis. Make sure to check it out. What are the prerequisites for this? You need, I think, obviously a Power BI license. You need to be able to read in the database. So I guess that either a member or a build permission, you will need a pro license, Power BI pro license, or that the thing is on a premium capacity, so that I believe should work too. And then what version of Excel is always difficult? I would guess that you need probably one of the latest ones. So if you can see data types, that means that you don't have the appropriate Excel license. Okay, so check it out, let me know what you think. Absolutely wonderful. Make sure you create data types for your organization. This is so cool, so cool. I will see you again on Thursday with a DAX Redis video that is going to be pretty cool, I think. We'll see. Okay. See you soon. Bye-bye.